3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, I think things are okay now. Um, kind of okay, because I realize now that I forgot to change the title of this presentation from yesterday. Yesterday we did a, a presentation called Getting Started the Village Badge, and today it's called, what is it called? Oh, today's the Badge Clinic. Um, so this is, you know, a general purpose, office hour style, ask questions and provide and share answers. Interactive, okay? So I'm going to be checking in on the um, Monero, let's see, on the Monero office text channel quite often, okay? So it seems we have uh, a visitor, a 3 arson there, and... Um, I'll try to keep track of the general text channel as well, but um, maybe we should just have one channel next year. In any case, that's that's what the office hours channel is for now. And until any question or request comes in, um, I'll just go through some some general purpose information. Does, it, does that work for you? Really? <laughs> okay. All right. I can't see anybody. Probably there's. 3,000 or maybe four people or one and a half people watching. I don't know. Um, so we've got all of these badges here. We've got one from last year as well. Um, I don't have, yeah, I don't have from two years ago, the Bicos badge, but we've got some other things to look at. We've got this, we've got this little thing here, kind of this is, we may have some more advanced purpose, uh, you know, for advanced people who have soldering skills, and we can get into that, some impersonation, some uh, copying of tags. And good news, folks, I have today, I have today a closed circuit document, uh, I'm sorry, a microscope, so we can take a look at some really small parts things like this little switch there, you see that? All right, so, so we've got all of these options. So we've got all of these options is what I wanted to say. And um, um, just checking the channels. I don't want that, no voice. This gets confusing. Okay, here's the right channel. All right, so uh, these are the villages that are participating in the inter-village network project badge. And Monero is producing the hardware, Monero devices, in fact. That's a commercial group, a company. Uh, the biohacking village uh, is involved, IoT as well. You have good friends there and the red team. Rogues Village um, pro pro produced a game. So if you look at the manual that comes with the badge, let me just open that. It's so large that I can't even fit it on the camera. All right, sorry about that. Here's another brought to you by just to kind of a reminder. And there's a few people not associated with the villages who simply helped so much or provided and contributed things like artwork, uh, legal advice, um, materials. So that's why they're in there. It's maybe a good start to check out the manual. Each one of these blocks or pages describes something else. There's a quick start here. So whoever doesn't know what a badge looks like, we can, we can follow along this quick start. Yesterday I had orange Monero orange badges. Today I think I will change to the attack red style, if you don't mind. There's several colors. Um, right, so the one thing, when you get started, before we get into the advanced um, portions, um, so you might have a phone like this, and you want to make sure that it's, that you can, you, that you're logged in. How do you even say that? If the screen is dark, if it's not active, if it's if you can't 
if you can't use it actively, what's basically happening is asking, are you a human? Do you have permissions to use this device? And if you haven't done your code or whatever you do to get in yet, then the NFC circuit will not accept any transmission. So you need to be inside the screen. You need to be able to swipe around and use your phone. Once you're inside, you need to make sure that your NFC circuit is turned on. And sometime today, maybe tomorrow, but probably today it may focus. Oh goodness, okay folks. The camera is good enough. So anyway, you do maybe can tell that there's an NFC symbol there. There's an NFC symbol there, and that needs to be turned on as well. So what are the situations where you cannot use your NFC uh, powered badge? Is when it's turned off like this. When it's off, you're not able to use a phone, then nothing happens if I start pushing buttons and try to use the badge, okay? You need to turn it on, put your code in, and once you do that, at this time, you can use your badge. Let's see what happens, I'm quite curious. I'm gonna push this um, moon button, okay? You hear that button when you push that? So it's a tactile button. It gives you some feedback to tell you, yes, you pushed it. <laughs> you idiot, you pushed the button. Okay, so um, I'm going to, wow. Can you see my hands? That's from, that's from working on these badges. I got chemical injuries, chemical burns all over my hands from making the, Stupid badges. All right, so um, that really zooms into the injuries. Anyway, um, I'm gonna push on, I'm gonna make sure it's turned on, and I'm going to push on the moon, and let's see what happens if I just do that correctly. All right, it seems that nothing happened. I was expecting it to go to the browser. Um, not sure what happens if I have the browser on. So that is surprising. Let's try another one. Maybe it doesn't have a URI pro programmed in. So let me let me push on this moon here. Yeah, okay, so I'm surprised. I thought that uh, Android had a MIME type set up um, for uh, URIs that when you when, you, when it detects a URI, it opens the browser automatically. Um, but it, it also could be, this is, okay. It also could be that I have my NFC application turned on, so it's capturing all of the, all of the MIME actions. God, that's hard to push it. Oh, it also could be that I didn't program this one like a dummy. So let's try one that's programmed. That was not programmed either. <laughs> okay, so now I'm finally, so let's just go back a bit. Now I'm finally reassured that my observation matches what I actually believe to be the case. When you have a badge like this one and you push a button on here, which is programmed with a URI, a universal resource indicator, and that URI is a HTTP URI, right? Then it will open your browser, right? So you can see that I have this phone just to a empty page and I'm gonna push now on the moon button, which is per default out of the factory programmed with a URI. Uh, gotta push that. Okay, opens the browser automatically to the URI that that you programmed in, okay? So the, the whole runaround about this is that the four um, suits, so that's the name of the, the, the group that is the team called Rogues Village. They created this, um, this game and I've only gotten a few screens in, so I'm not a pro at this. I'm not, I'm not in, in um, any shape to explain it, but the game works with this badge, all right? So that's the one thing. And you can see that, so we've kind of covered the quick start pretty well. You know, you have to push a button and the thing needs to be turned on. Um, on the last screen here, it kind of is 
telling you, okay, this is the URI. This is the one that's programmed into the badge. All right, so you can do all of these things using these two applications. And we hope that, that more people will develop applications or improve these. We can take a look at those in a minute. Let's see if there's any questions about that. Seems there isn't. Just wanted to make sure I haven't. Don't know, I guess that question, I guess there was a question, but it's crossed out, so. <laughs> It's crossed out, so I must have uh, answered it while while speaking. All right, so um, what else can we look at in this manual? The bill of materials is okay if you kind of are experienced with hardware, but some of these things are understandable, like the faux leather, the leatherette, the, P the PET plastic overlay is the thing on the front. For all of the different colors, it's the same overlay here. It's the DEF CON 28 color scheme with like a pastel green and some of these neon colors. Right, and um, the liquid photopolymer, that might be a bit confusing, but that's what creates these uh, frame um, enclosures, right? They, they harden to, to standard uh, rigid plastic when you shine a high intensity ultraviolet light into the liquid. Right, so, um, that's just to answer a few questions. We can, do you like the Gunter here? I'd like to know, Justin, do you like this Gunter? Say yes or no. I think he's wonderful. I mean, this this is a modern Gun Gunter made specifically for us, uh, contributed by Andres, who maybe he's watching. He's just one of the most wonderful illustrators in the world. And I mean, not just illustrators, but he created the, um, the design, the entire manual, pretty much. So I, I'm just astonished. Right, so um, we've got a big mix of a lot of different work from people like the Rogues Village, Monero Village, Monero Devices, me, Andres, a few other people that are mentioned on the front. And I just think it worked out very, very well. Um, in any case, so that's the manual. Um, could you demo? Yes, that's a good idea. So we have a question. I'm going to read it out loud in case someone isn't on um, Discord. Could you demo the Bob Monero Devices Com app? I wasn't able to get any functionality to work even using the links on the badge. Okay, so there's good news and bad news. <laughs> Where is this headed, right? So the bad news is that the implementation is not finished yet, but we can take a look at it. Let's see. We can kind of try to understand the intention and figure out how to complete the, the uh, implementation. All right, so village slides, talking to camera. How do I go to, how do I go? I think this is it. Right. Okay, so yeah, exactly. I think, how can I, I'm not used to broadcasting. So if we have some, let me just go to some non Monero page. Let's do Monero village. These are the standard run of the URLs. The one that we're thinking of now that we want to reference, which is written in the manual as well. This is bob.monerodevices.com. Does anybody know what BOB stands for? I'll bet you don't. This time I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to wait a whole hour until somebody comes up with the answer. BOB. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to hit return there and this is the the front the the home page for the inner village badge for this year's village badge. Okay, um Wish we could have some camera at the same time. Messed that up a bit. So on the left, we've got all of these menu items, which we can toggle on and off. Obviously, this is just the beginning stuff, right? I know that um, I know the thing that you're <laughs> that you're probably wanting to see, but you can you can kind of get uh, informed as to the status of. Okay, we can go to status as well. All systems are in operation. But if we take a look at some of the more in-depth things like the network, 
this is undergoing heavy development or we go up here and I think, okay, some of the actions, for example, expert mode, I'm hoping here that we can do some formatting of the NDEF EPROMs, things like that for experts only. So this mode, this is not yet implemented and um, keep checking back or uh, develop it on your own and do a pull request and um, we'll get that done so that we can use these expert mode things with a badge. And then the status will probably write a better message than systems in operation. We'll probably say, okay, expert mode is in operation now. All right, but this is very uh, fundamental and very primitive at this time. So some of these buttons are there, but as you can see, they're not well aligned. This is going to be um, how this is, yeah, this is going to be the, the entry point for programming your badge if you don't want to use the NFC tools application. All right, the NFC tools application is very full featured. They've worked on it for years, three, four years, I think. So they have all of the functionality that you could wish for in the NFC tools application. And what we're doing here is trying to just um, uh, very uh, specifically implement the features that some of these villages, like for example, the biohacking village, the Monero village, might uh, want to see in their badge, in their you know inter, inter village um, badge. So, so I'll go back to that in just a minute, but I'd like to, I'd like to draw some things. So I'm going to get a new piece of paper to explain how this will look once, once um, we get it working as we want it to. Is this making sense to you? Uh, I don't know what this person interesting there's no name attached to this so as if this is if you have a specific question then you can ask it but this is the this is the bob website we're doing high-tech slides today so what you see here is really an electric paper thin e-paper electronic device right it has a battery connected this is this is really high-tech folks it only looks like paper. It's not really, it's really, it's, this is high, high tech. This is high tech. Okay. All right. So this is the Bob website slide and you're seeing this created by me live. All right. So the Bob website, we took a look at it on the web browser before, and we've got the thing over there. Um, this is a uh, start and this is network. The rest of them, this is status, help, and so on. We've got a few things up here, like expert mode. You read that okay? I think it's okay. Um, so, so start is going to give you choices for, let me see, maybe I should, instead of using such a thick pen, some of the fine things. So start is going to give you Village choices, we've got Monero, we've got biohacking, we've got rogues, you get the idea. So I'm going to check off biohacking and Monero. Those are my two favorite. And at the bottom, then we, we're going to have three buttons. We're going to have, um, yeah, so this is kind of, this is approximate, right? I think you can read that. Can you read that, Rerar? Is Rerar even here? <laughs> what, what happens when you go to school and you miss your class, Rerar? I think we'll have to take points off. Um, so the whole idea of this start menu item is that this is where we're going to be able to write and read profiles. If we're unhappy with the factory default profile, which is really generic, it doesn't have any village uh, identifiers at all. It's basically an FUD, um, which we can even see here. Let's quickly, this could be interesting. I'll take a better, better get a badge that's, that's working. So I'm going to use the NFC tools application, and then I'm going to push the star button this time. All right, push the star button. 
All right, so this, so here we have an FUD. FUD, what does that stand for, Justin? You don't know? AJS, do you know? Okay, FUD stands for um, Factory Unique Dentifier, all right? As, so FUI just doesn't do it for me. I needed FUD, and to do that, we need to call it Factory Unique Dentifier. All right, so that's what's what's programmed into most of these badges, except for the middle one, the um, the moon, which is comes out of the factory with the game. Uh. So if you look at um, the the record zero there, the data, that's what's programmed into the moons. Okay, and if I didn't have this this um, application running, then it would go right to the web to the website. So let's keep that in mind we can consider that when we're when we're thinking of how this start menu works so i i click on read and the profile that comes up is going to say something like factory profile with a fud identifier all right now what happens if we're not happy about with this we then check our villages the ones that we like the most we can check more than one hopefully and then click right and this writes a new profile. All right, so after we click Monero and biohacking and click right, we will need to place the badge against the phone, push one of the three buttons, and your new profile will be written to the location in question, the one that you pushed. If you want to write a profile to the sun, you push the sun, you know what I mean. You could do the sun, you could do Monero alone, you could do moon for just rogues village alone, and the star could program red team, IOT, biohacking, and uh, what's the, and wi wireless. No, wait a minute, crypto privacy, they're kind of on board as well. All right, so that's the, the whole idea behind this, um, this custom tailored application kind of making it easier for you to hop on to the what? To the village, to the intervillage network. All right, so how is that gonna work? I'm gonna use a different page. Let's check quickly for a Discord question. All right, so I'm gonna go to a different page. This was explaining the start menu button. Now we're gonna talk about the Bob website. And we'll focus on, is this marker on paper working for you, Justin? Because this is, this is for you. Um, so this is a website. And we've got start up here. And then we've got net. It actually says network, I think. You get the idea. And then we've got a few more down here. All right, so this one is what we're talking about now. And let me see what it was. Oh yeah. Okay, so according to my memory, because I don't have my notes, we're going to have a few different commands for the network. This is the backend network that connects the different uh, villages that are participating. This may have a, a proxy, a bridge to Discord, to IRC, to some other networks like that, but really it's based on MQTT. So when everything is broken, as for example, I've heard, we heard from the PHV, the Packet Hacking Village, that Discord is having some problems that they're working on. When all of the networks are broken and not working, as long as you have IP connectivity to our MQTT network, um, then, the, then these commands will still function. Right, the other things are just kind of bridges, which are optional. Um, but for the village network, uh, we will have these commands. We will have, first of all, sorry, <laughs> can you, sorry. So first of all, we'll have connect. This will simply, do a ping out to the network. And if there's no return to the ping, it means that you're like, you're mobile and your battery's dead or you're you you know, you're in airplane mode, something like that. So we connect to the network 
The next one will be authenticate. This is optional. Maybe some networks, uh, I'm sorry, some um, channels or, or, or network uh, topics are simply there for test purposes. You don't need to authenticate. So in some cases you do need to authenticate and others you don't. I think authentication is maybe relevant when we need to have a unique user so that people can talk to each other, just like modeled after IP itself, the internet protocol, right? Different nodes, computers, devices, objects on the internet protocol network, they can't talk to one another if they're not, a, if they're not assigned a unique number, which is called the IP number. So we'll have a similar thing here. In fact, that's why at the factory we programmed these factory unique identifiers. And once we, um, once we, so, so let's see. So once we um, use the start and write our own unique identifiers, like we were big fans of biohacking, for example. So we use the biohacking write data. It will not, it will no longer be a factory unique identifier. It will then be a, uh, it starts with S. It will then be a, Sensitive, unique identifier. No, S U I. Sensitive, <laughs> sensitive, unique identifier. Imagine that. We'll say the word as is it written in the dictionary. All right. So the S U I will um, lead you to these numbers which you can authenticate with. All right. So the third um, command will be knock. And this basically takes a param um, an argument. We want to knock on, I don't know how we're going to code these arguments, probably as buttons, because this is all HTML. Uh, but we'll probably be able to knock on the, what's a good village? Um, intrusion detection village, ID, IDV, which doesn't exist in safe mode this year. <laughs> so it's a it's a good village to choose, isn't it? So we're going to knock on a village door, and assuming that they have not locked the door or that the Discord channel is not set to close, then this automatically opens the door. So you kind of understand where this system is headed. Um, this is what is commonly known as, let me just find it. It's on the other side. So this is what's commonly known as a village network story. Kind of a uh, a gentle gamified step by step type of introduction to the intervillage network using badges. Okay, but this is not my decision where this is all headed. This could go anywhere. Anybody can um, can influence how this story appears. In fact, my original idea, folks which we had to cancel because too few people were interested, was to make a kid's version, a kid's story, something like memory with you know, dogs, cats, um, rock players, guitars, things that kids like. So there was a kid's story, which is slightly different than this, but made sense to those young hackers under 15. So if you're a hacker that's only eight, nine, 10 years old, you should have a service from us that represents your interests. That's my opinion, okay? So I was really interested in having a kid's story, which didn't work. So we'll probably get it done next year, but we had to cancel it for this year. And in this, in this year's version, we just have these two. We have the Rogues Village uh, game, and then we have the, what, the, the, the portal that allows you to choose profiles. Right, and so what comes after knock? What traditionally happens after you knock on, the, on a door, the door opens because it's automatic, you know, no human is there, but you can go in the door. Or a human is standing there. You know, the, maybe the human wants to know what you want. They're saying, what's your name? Do you have permission to enter? These type of things. So any command that could follow here is kind of up to you and me. It's our, imaginary, it's our imagination. And I'll tell you, it's quite a lot of fun to design and implement a whole new network using all of these opcodes, right? Especially if the job is easy because you're limiting this to like a half dozen opcodes. And um, so I don't think it will be too difficult. But the bad news is, so that's the good news. The bad news is that this, this just isn't finished yet. Um, yeah, I was working until the last minute 
soldering and pasting, adhe adhering, creating these uh, hardware devices. So that's why I didn't get to this. And the other people who said they would get to this kind of didn't either. So that's why it's not well, um, it is well designed, but it's not well tested. So the, the things that we have working, they're kind of in different pieces. And there is like, the check boxes are on one page, and then there's a tab which doesn't, which doesn't belong in this, um, in this user interface. And the tab was giving us write, and then there's another place which is a button for read. So that's why you're not seeing this because it's just too poorly organized. And the part that is well organized, um, which is on the website running right now, that's this thing here. Um, there's, a, there's a little bit of eye candy there um, from, uh, from Andres, so it's really nice stuff. Um, and this is the part that's well organized. You know, it's got fading in and out and things and illustrations. However, uh, it doesn't have the functionality. So we've got to combine these things, right? It might be worth, it might be worth mentioning. Um, there is a connection here as well. Uh, you know, if you're interested in, in using a hardware badge, the one that actually is in circulation, there's a few different places you can find them. And I think this is working. I'm actually not sure. Let's check this out. All right, so that's hack five. That's the one place you can find the black badges. Um, this is kind of testing in action, real time. Here is a Cypher Market, the premier place for Monero merchandise, everything from shirts to stickers to badges. All right, so here you can get more than just the black badges. You can receive, you can get all these, these different colors. All right. And let's see what the very last one is the factory store. How do I get to that? Okay, here. And this is a different, yet a different store where you can find things like, like last year's Monero Ising badge, for example. I got a few of these done. I think there's five or six which are ready to go. Not very many. And another thing that's maybe interesting because this is commonly confused, I think it's the only, um, I couldn't convince the other folks to carry this. So this is the do, D, DIY, the do-it-yourself version, which looks like this. It doesn't have a enclosure and you have to put the parts together yourself. So it's much more inexpensive and it gives you an option to really look at the, um, the circuits before the leather comes onto it, which can be an advantage, right? So that's the only place to get the DIY badges. And that's up here. Um, the, so because the, the start ops and the read write buttons are not connected to actual JavaScript, which does those um, operations, um, we'll have to use NFC tools during this office hours, during this badge clinic. What I also want to mention is that is it here? Ah, it's still not here, unfortunately. Unfortunately, okay, so. Yeah, so unfortunately, there is something you need to do in order to use phones with, I'm sorry, not phones, but websites with the village badge. Um, the Chrome team had a program, as so I will, I, I won't make it a long story, but a program that ended on July the 29th. Really nice guys, right? To end the program, <laughs> the thing that we really need to use. On the 29th, could they not wait a week or two? No, they ended it on the 29th, which means that you need to do, you need to jump through hoops in order to use a web browser with, um, with anything that's NFC powered. Um, oh, I can do this on the on the larger. So I will go through the steps now, just, just in case it gets confusing later, you do have this uh, demonstration then. 
So this is going to be well documented here in the welcome part of the site, okay? But the thing that you need to do, I thought I had this somewhere, but it caught me off guard that they ended the program on the 29th. So the first thing is, unfortunately, Firefox hasn't been able to make it work, and all the, the Apple things, they've decided they don't like NFC at all in their websites. <laughs> right? so, so this is Apple that I think it took them eight years to uh, put an NFC circuit in their phones. So it might take them a very, very long time, folks. I would not wait for Apple to actually start implementing the things that are available in Android today. Um, so if you type on version, you can see what version of Chrome you're using. And what we really want is flags. Okay, do you see that URL there? Chrome flags at the top. Okay, this is all what? This is in German, I'm sorry about that. Um, but it's clear enough because lots of stuff here is in English. So I'm just gonna leave the German stuff up here. It basically says, be careful, warning, these are experimental features. Only turn, turn them off, uh, turn, only turn them on if you know what you're doing. So we're going to search for, I think it's called something platform. There it is. All right, so I just had to search for platform and there's a few things that come up, but the very first one, this one here, experimental web platform features. So this is disabled because in my case, I'm using a computer, a big computer that has no NFC circuit. That's why I don't need this. But if I do enable this, just like this, and then I relaunch, I'm not gonna relaunch folks, but you know, you understand the, the procedure here. And this will be enabled. And if it's on a, running on a phone, any device with an NFC circuit, that's when you can start to use NFC from your phone in a website together with your InterVillage badge. I hope I explained that well enough. I'm gonna look and see if there's any questions about it. Um, seems there's not, unless it's up here on general. Let me check the general text. All right, so everything's fine. If you're watching and you kind of got the, the picture about this where you're gonna need this turned on, unless the Chrome team uh, re-enables the NFC for certain sites. All right, then after you do this with the Chrome flags, then you can go to Bob. The website is there, but it's not hooked in to the NFC JavaScript features, which you'll probably want to use. You'll probably want to onboard to your village of choice, like the Monero village or the Rogues village, Red Team, Crypto Privacy, all of these different villages that are participating, like um, biohacking and IoT. You can first read data if you're feeling a bit, if you're feeling a bit, um, if you want to test it to know if your badge is working. And once you do that, there will be a, uh, there will be text that comes below that telling you which profile you have. Probably it has the factory default profile with the FUDs, the factory uh, unique identifiers. All right, then write data will simply write what you have selected in Onboard Village. So if you have all of the villages selected, which means biohacking, Rogues Village, Monero Village, Red Team, IoT, Crypto Privacy, is that the name? I think it is the name, Crypto, Cryptography and Privacy Village. So that's when your write data will, will simply write unique identifiers, which are SUIs, sensitive unique identifiers, to your badge for all of those different villages. All right, so that's kind of the cheap way to describe and demonstrate what happens with the BOB application, which is the, which is the main website for the intervillage badge this year. All right, that's the website, the homepage and the portal for making everything work over, over JavaScript. Don't forget that you need to turn on the, the NFC um, Chrome feature, the, the experimental platform in order to use the BOB website correctly. Until the 29th, you didn't have to, and right now you do. Who knows if in another week or so, the Chrome team will make that work again. And if we're really lucky, then in less than five years, Apple will actually make NFC available to people using Apple devices with websites. All right, so 
that's what we have here. We're going to be able to connect to the back, back end, to the MQTT network. We're going to be able to authenticate with our FUD or our unique identifier. What is it? A sensitive unique identifier. That's it. So that's how that's going to work, authenticate. And if we just provide nothing at all, then we will have access to some of the test um, channels. And then we can knock on a village. And if it maps to a village, so a real village name that's on Discord, there will probably be a bridge, which will then write a knock knock message to that village. In fact, if you look on the Monero villages channels, you will find one that's called uh, mv-proxy. And that proxy channel, okay, if it, I'll finish the sentence, mv-proxy-text, okay, it's a text channel. And what that is intended for is are these type of applications, you know, bots and automated um, applications that work with the Discord uh, channel system. AJS had a, a very, very, well, he, he does have a very, very um, nice and interesting bot that is a tip bot. Um, the reason for that is a very similar story to Chrome teams uh, deciding to block NFC on the 29th of July. Um, the folks that are running Discord for us, they're doing a great job. We're very grateful and thankful that they're running and maintaining Discord um, channels for DEF CON. They just couldn't get all of the bots online. It was too much. It was just too much work and too high a risk without being able to be certain that every bot was doing as they were told, right? So they kind of um, they kind of canceled the bot system. That's why we couldn't get AJS's tip bot onto our proxy um, channel. How can I? Um, yeah, it's too. I wonder if I can very quickly add a source in OBS show you the, the these channel names. This will be kind of difficult. I'm not going to be able to do it in time. Um, in any case, uh, this will simply be another application running through these proxy channels. And that's the best answer I have to the question that we got before about could you demonstrate the Bob application, right? So not all of this is, um, is working completely. The hardware is complete. Everything is finished from the membrane overlays. That's in the front. Um, the embossed places, full color. On top of that, the parts inside, which look like this. And basically everything's finished with the hardware, just not the software. The backend system is kind of working. I mean, it's working great, but it's just not very, um, very rich. It's a very primitive system. All right, so what we can do is take a look maybe under the microscope at some of these things now just to change, switch gears a bit from this that we had before. So I'll find a blank piece of paper. I'm sorry, a blank piece of electronic EPD high tech, cutting edge, foldable screen, multi thousand euro devices. There is a badge, this is a prototype. And um, what you can do if, for example, especially if you pick up one of the DIY, the cheapest models, which, which, which when you get it out of the box, it looks like this. It is here, okay, there we go. You can see that pretty well. So it is assembled for you. And the reason is that some of those parts on there are very, very small. Okay, so it just wouldn't make any sense at all to send a package of parts which you need to very carefully put down with tape, get the contacts right with these dome switches, and the ICs that are involved there, they're just, they're two by three millimeters large, okay? And if you can imagine like these, these uh, dome switches, they just slide around, as you can see, they go all over the place. You've got to perfectly align all three without the use of tools and then get the right kind of tape on there that's trapezoidal sh shape and then put, you know, avoid the, <laughs> avoid the through hole gold contacts. So a lot of that stuff, I just thought it would be probably too difficult, um, especially soldering these parts. So this is how your do it yourself kit arrives. You receive this, you receive 
so my workplace here it's just a big mess and I'm not seeing where oh here I found it it's a small miracle but I found a do-it-yourself kit so you get a, a front overlay I can't get the light just right here but you can tell this is a, a overlay with a adhesive back right and you get and th there are two pieces so there's a there's a piece of leather which this is all adhesive so you don't need to um, mess around with glue no glue and no tools required this is really for novice users if you want to um, assemble your own PCB you can probably do that in fact I don't know if this is secret or not the very first hundred devices that we sold um, they had they included a bare PCB with no parts at all so I was thinking will people assemble them probably not but if you were one of the lucky first hundred then you got a bare PCB and I, I guess you know I don't know how to distribute them because it's all going by post now but I have no problem I have enough bare PCBs if other people want those just have to let me know tell me and we'll have to just discuss and figure out a way to distribute them to you so while I was talking about these very small pieces I think I can finally demonstrate because we do have a microscope now just have to switch to the microscope screen all right so let's just start with a let's start with the back of a this is a Monero rising I'm not sure where it says rising you will just have to trust me this is how the front looks so there you can see that it is truly a Monero rising. This is always a problem with microscopes, with document cameras. You can have it big, you can have it small, but you can't have both. Um, so, okay, here are some of the parts. There is the PAMIC, the Power Mo uh, Management IC that belongs on the Monero rising, which uh, controls all of the various lights. Here's the microcontroller. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the size in comparison. Maybe I'll have to focus a bit. In comparison to the very standard size microcontroller, here is the size of, of, the, of the NFC EPROMs that we're using this year. You see the difference? It's giant. And even that one microcontroller is really not that big <laughs> right so let me just take this over here this is what we were just looking at can you see the microcontroller can you identify the part that we were just looking at well not if it's not in focus but if it is focused put my finger on there there we go now it's focused so the microcontroller that we were just looking at is right here it's really not a very large piece and if we compare that with the parts that are on the on this year's badge, they're very, very small. All right, so I keep saying it's small and small and small. You get the point, right? Um, we can go back to the microscope and look at some of the other things. Microscopes are always very intriguing. So we have, so it's a very simple system this year. We don't have 100 or 120 parts as we did last year. Can see the traces all of the uh, schematics which means where these traces go here's the tip of a ballpoint pen so all of these traces they're basically connecting legs or parts no not parts they're con connecting the contacts of these integrated circuits with other things like like the antenna for example where you see a hole here this is quite interesting this is called a via and this via simply traverses the board, right? Because the board is what is um, what 1.6 millimeters thick. Is that how thick they are? Yeah, 1.6 millimeters. And um, it goes to the bottom. And if we turn the board the board over, which I'll do quickly now, and we can see holes on the bottom as well. So basically, that via is connecting a track 
from the bottom to the top. All right, so that's what vias do, and that's how we connect the different parts together. And if you want to be a hardware hacker and solder some headers on to this, I did make a mistake. I made them uh, separated only, what? Um, they're two millimeters apart. They should be 1.27. Um, so I kind of, there's a few mistakes that will cause you a few headaches, but you can still ha um, solder headers on there. They just won't line up to the traditional, what, Arduino and breadboards. So here is the, that's really fine etching, isn't it? So one of our subcontractors did a good job this year, the etchers. And this is um, the antenna, right? And you can see where the antenna connects to the front because somewhere there must be a what? A hole. It's called a via. And there it is. So this hole is connecting to the front, and this in this manner, we're getting the, oh, now I just put some ink on there. <laughs> and in this manner, we're getting the antenna, which is on the back, going to a track, which is on the front, connected to these three parts, U1, U2, and U3. And those U, U1, U2, and U3 connect to, can you guess? To these, okay, it doesn't make sense to to use a micro, microscope for for um, already very large things. And those uh, three EEPROMs, uh, integrated circuits, which you can actually see because we made the windows, we made the um, the front overlay transparent. We put windows in so you can see your electronics. I mean, you could chip away the plastic and connect uh, taps to the legs of the EEPROMs. But I don't know, I don't recommend that. So anyway, that's how you do this. So as a last demonstration before we end, because we're getting close to the end, aren't we, uh, Justin? And there are no more questions. So the last demonstration, I will show you how I write information to um, my badges. So I'm going to go away from the browser and I'm going to use NFC tools. You can do pro or tools, doesn't matter which one. All right, so I'm going to do write. I'm going to add a record. I'm going to do a URL. Did you see all of the different? I mean, this is all of the things that you can do with a with a badge. You can even put a Bitcoin address on there. This is what most people will probably do in the in the Monero Village. All right, that was a joke, by the way. Okay, so you can put your um your email address on there. You can do and you can do multiple. All right, so I'm going to do a demonstration now. I'm going to put a URI. I'm going to choose HTTPS. I'm going to choose uh, RERAR's excellent website. RERAR, is it an excellent website or is this just kind of a half, not very good website? What's your opinion? All right, so now we have a piece of data that we can write to the badge. You see that? I'm going to even do a second one now. I'm going to put my, what? Put my, I'll just put a text record on there. And I'll call it the intervillage. Badge. All right, so now we have two pieces of data. Which one uh, occupies the, f the, the, the first slot? Well, we can change the order. This is very important because if you're, if you're planning to have your badge activate the web browser and, and start the web browser running automatically, it must have a URL in the very first uh, slot. If it doesn't, then it will activate some other MIME type, right? Some other application. Mike, as your editor, is starting to run. So now I'm going to do write. And which should I use? Let's go back to the red one. So I will I will write it to the star. Is that okay with you with you folks? We'll write it to star. So I'm going to I'm going to click the star after I put it on the back like this, okay? I'm gonna line it up with the antenna of my phone. Then I'm going to click the star. Ready for this? One, two, three, click. Oh, no, where is it? One, two, three, click. All right, did you see and hear that? So now if I close this, open it again. This time I'll open, um, oh, I had Pro already running. So this time I will open Pro and I will do a read. I will. I will click on that star and see what happens. All right, so it got a read. And what records are in there? Do you see that? That's how this works with the read operations. This is what the website will do as well. 
but just uh, not now because the pieces are disorganized. All right, so that's kind of a demonstration of, of writing with NFC tools. All right, and tomorrow I'm just gonna give you, okay, we've got a few minutes, I think. I'm not sure about this. Tomorrow I'm gonna do a different uh, demonstration. Tomorrow is another office hours, another badge clinic. You see this box of chocolates? What do you think is inside here? AJS, what do you think is inside? Or XMR Scott, do you have a, do you have a, a guess about this? All right. It's chocolates is inside, guys. Right, chocolates are inside. But another thing that's inside is a phone. All right, so what do you think is gonna happen? And this phone, I've got it taped, it's very well secured. Do you see how it won't fall off? So what do you think, if I, if I put this box of chocolates with the phone inside, oh, at a dentist's office, well, you wouldn't wanna put a box of chocolates at a dentist's office, you know, like the waiting office of an airline or something like that. It's just gonna be there, it's gonna be shrink wrapped so nobody looks inside. And people are going to put their NFC embedded cards on top of that. And tomorrow we will see what happens if you use an NFC device which does not have protection against opportunistic data theft like this in the inner, inner village batch. And that's the, the demonstration for tomorrow. And that's the end of our, of our, God, I can't find, okay, I can't find anything. This whole place is a mess, right? But SVP, we're just two minutes before the next presentation. So that means I'm going to quit while we're ahead. That means that I'm gonna say bye-bye folks and thanks for coming to the badge clinic of the Monero Village on Saturday at DEFCON 28 safe mode.